Workers at General Motors are facing an uncertain future this holiday season. The company announced it is stopping production at five factories. The move would cost some 14,000 jobs in North America. Yamish Alcindor is back with reporting from Detroit and Lordstown, Ohio, two communities that depend on General Motors. And so we'll, we just don't know for sure what's going to happen after... June. Peggy Jones has worked at General Motors for more than 20 years. The good pay and benefits supports her and the five grandchildren she's raising. It's uh, kind of hard to think about what's going on, though. But in late November, GM announced plans to begin shuttering five plants in North America. They include Peggy's plant in Hamtramck, Michigan, which borders Detroit. A GM executive came to her plant to make the announcement. She told us, she said, the cars aren't selling and uh, we're gonna be an unallocated plant. So unallocated is supposed to mean that we don't have any product in our plant. So it didn't register at first. Unless GM brings a new car, for Hemtramck's 1,300 hourly employees, no product means no work. No one came out and said, no, it's not closing. I'm sorry. I've been trying to stay strong for everybody at the plant because they depend on me, but I'm a human being too. I was angry, and then I was disappointed, and then I was, okay, what are you going to do? What's the next move? Denitra Landon works on the Hamtramck assembly line. They brought me back to when I was homeless before. Yeah, it brought some shadows and some memories back. I'm in survival mode again. She and her family spent a year squatting in this house until she got a job at General Motors. That was almost four years ago. Her income helped her buy the home next door. I've never made this much money hourly before in my life. Uh, never had these great health benefits before in my life. This is the Landon Five. She thinks GM should have communicated better with its employees. We didn't know. We found out after the fact, and that's not fair. We're not robots that you can push a button and say, okay, do this. Now do that. You, know, you, you have to explain to us what's going on as much as you can. And that's all that anyone can ever ask for is respect. GM is also idling a second plant in Michigan, plus ones in Ohio, Maryland, and Canada. The company is cutting production of sedans, which haven't been selling as well as crossovers and trucks. GM says it's slashing costs to invest in future technology, like electric and self-driving cars. In a statement to NewsHour, General Motors said, quote, we are doing this while the company and economy are strong and to address current market conditions. Factory jobs aren't the only ones on the chopping block. The company plans to eliminate 15% of its salaried workforce. That's about 8,000 white collar jobs. Last week, General Motors CEO Mary Barra traveled to Capitol Hill to meet with lawmakers from states that will suffer because of the company's cuts. It's important for General Motors to make necessary but incredibly difficult changes to make sure that we can be in a leadership position. The American consumer and taxpayer is not bailing out General Motors again. Everybody knows that. Patrick mm -hmm. Anderson is the president of an auto industry consulting firm in East Lansing, Michigan. A little Every auto executive in Detroit remembers the 90s, the 2000s, the 80s, when car companies like General Motors built products, even if they couldn't sell them, just to keep the plants running. That led, along with a bunch of other mistakes, to General Motors bankruptcy. For decades, GM has been the engine that's powered Lordstown, Ohio, population 3,200. Last month's news struck the town like a bombshell. It will no longer be home to the Chevy Cruze in 2019. The GM plant used to work around the clock manufacturing the Cruze, but signs of trouble began almost two years ago when the company started cutting hours and laying off workers. I'll just come here and I'll watch Bell and you take Ali and- Tommy Wallaco and his fiance, Rochelle Carlisle, met while working at the factory. They both lost their jobs on the same day in that first round of layoffs. When we walked out of there that night, it was like a, a surreal feeling. It was very, very quiet throughout the entire plant. And no, it's two years later and still no one knows what's going to happen. It's like we've just been left to, you know, left out to dry. I feel like it's kind of corporate greed, you know, because GM's profiting more than they ever did, you know, in their history. Do you want these? 
Rochelle has been supporting them and their daughters by working as a waitress. But Friday, Tommy finally got a new job as a diesel technician. Here in 2016, President Trump turned Trumbull County, which includes Lordstown, from blue to red. He vowed to keep and even increase jobs in auto manufacturing towns like this one. But now some in Lordstown say his words ring hollow. Let me tell you folks in Ohio and in this area, don't sell your house. Don't sell your house. Do not sell it. We're going to get those values up. We're going to get those jobs coming back, and we're going to fill up those factories or rip them down and build brand new ones. He said to the crowd, he said, um, you know, don't sell your homes. Well, I bought a house two miles away from where I, you know, worked. Um, he said, you know, jobs are going to be pouring back in. I lost my job. It just kind of sounded like he was speaking to me. At his new job, he's making $10 an hour less. He still hopes to work again at GM. The plant isn't just the heartbeat of Lordstown, it supports the entire surrounding Mahoning Valley. We're tough, we're gonna persevere. Lordstown Mayor Arnold Hill says small businesses around the factory are suffering too. He does a little bit of everything. Like Ross's Pub, the after work watering hole just down the street from the plant. We're very small and a lot of other businesses in other communities are hurting just like us, uh, if not worse. For every GM job, it's said that seven jobs outside can be directly affected. But he insists there's still hope that General Motors will remain in the area. They're not permanently shuttering it, so there's still hope that we may get another plant, and hopefully life goes on. Meanwhile, in Detroit, employees like Peggy Jones are facing tough choices. They can apply for transfers based on seniority or wait for a new product that may never come. I can't sit there and wait to the last minute and then don't have any opportunities and just get laid off. I can't do that. Denitra Landon says the holidays won't be the same, with the threat of unemployment looming. But she's still trimming her tree and hoping for the best. I would never be homeless again, ever. Not ever, and my children won't ever. You're taking a big chunk of what has kept me alive and brought me back to where I am, and now you're taking a big chunk of it away from me again. So now I'm, I gotta scratch and I, I gotta crawl again. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Yami Shelf Sendor in Detroit.